Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Testing, testing. Start this. Okay, 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 okay. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Check one, two, 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 one, two. This shirt is wrinkled. Sorry for that man. Sorry for that girl. All right, let's do this. Counting down three, two, one. Until you know how to set boundaries, you will either be too much or not enough for everyone. Hello and welcome to The Glow Show, season two, all about you, where I help you navigate a new area of life, business, and social media. As an empath who has dedicated her platform to education and service, I'm honestly learning as I go, but sharing my lessons along the way. If you like a question answered live, just visit milliondollarshortcut.com, purchase your copy, and text it to the number at the top of the screen. Learning, loving, and laughing out loud. <laughs> That's The Glow Show. Do things are as powerful. Do things are as powerful. What up, what up, what up, y'all? So it's been, what, two days, two episodes? Like, well, again, depending on when I release this. <laughs> She's a podcaster, y'all. I think it's it hasn't really hit me that I'm almost at 50 episodes. Like, that feels... Like, imagine if I imagine because <laughs> this ain't reality but let's say I recorded a new episode every week for a year that would be 52 episodes so 50 feels like reaching that one year mark you know but the goal is by the end of the year to have 100 episodes so I'm definitely just trying to push myself to be a lot more consistent and also not have a perfect script like if you're watching on YouTube here is my script very skeletal Sorry, this is very, very bright. Okay, well, I'll just show you. It has the title, or I'll just tell you. It has the title, it has three bullet point, like, talking points. There's three talking points, three subjects, and three lessons. Like, it's three, three, three. It could be like three stories, three topics, three lessons, or three stories, three lessons, three bullet points. But I try to make everything in threes and I don't script it to the point of like word for word. That way I can just kind of um, free flow and make it feel like a conversation. What I love about podcasts is that I want them to feel like conversations. I want them to feel as if we're like in a living room, kumbaya style, just like round table discussions, you know, more context than a Twitter that a tweet or um, an Instagram post can allow. So that forces me to be imperfect and show up, you know, with my raw thoughts. And the thing is, you might not agree with everything I say. The, the goal is not for you to ever agree with 100% of what I say. Everything that I talk about, I want it to always be an invitation to a deeper perspective, or at least an invitation to another perspective you haven't previously considered, because that's where empathy is born. So today's episode is all about how to set boundaries. And ironically enough, I came up with this topic. I've already talked about my boundaries in season one. And if you've seen the structure between season one and season two, in season one, every episode starts with my. In season two, every episode starts with how to. So I really wanted it to be not really an instruction manual, but kind of sharing how I've done things. So in season one, I talk about what they are. And then in season two, I wanna talk about how I've done them. So my boundaries, you, I showed you what they were, or I told, told you what they were, and so now I'm gonna tell you how and why I set them. And yeah, hopefully it's important or helpful <laughs> for any of you. So first and foremost, the importance of boundaries, and there's an amazing book called Boundaries by Timothy Keller, which every person should read at least once in their lifetime because it's like biblical. But what's beautiful about boundaries is that 
you can continue to redefine them as your life just continues to evolve. And I never want people to feel, no, actually, sorry, who's, Timothy Keller is not the author of Boundaries. As I was saying it, I was like, let me, Henry Cloud. <sighs> Timothy Keller is a Christian author. Sorry, okay, Henry Cloud. I knew it. I was like, mm, I'm gonna type this into Google as I talk, but for some reason, Timothy Keller does not sound right. Henry Cloud. Um, it's a thick book. I have it in my main office. But Boundaries by Henry Cloud, the title cover design is like a pencil, like splitting the middle. It's beautifully done. But Dr. Henry Cloud wrote that book. Read it, highly recommend for everyone. But the importance of boundaries is that a lot of times, or we go through life kind of giving up pieces of ourselves to please others and compromising what we want for what people think we need or what they need. And boundaries allows you to get back to yourself and learn how to love yourself again. I think boundaries are also a form of self-care and my coach Brandon Burchard would always say, like emails for example, setting the boundary of not checking your emails on the weekends is a form of self-care because boundaries are, in his words, nothing more than a list of other people's agendas. And I was like, oh, touche. Because technically, if I never open another email, I'll be fine. Like, <laughs> I'll be okay. But emails, again, if you're trying to accelerate, you're trying to advance, you want to, you know, build your network, like you have to open your emails, but just, I, I don't have email notifications. So I, I literally, the only time I know that I have an email is when I decide to check. And I have about seven, eight <laughs> email accounts. I probably check two on a regular basis, but you know, that's, I, if imagine if I had all eight email accounts where new email alerts were coming in for every single thing, I wouldn't be able to get through my day. So anyways, that's an energetic boundary. And we'll talk about that later, but I didn't learn about boundaries. I don't think I really exercised them until like 2020. Like quarantine forced a lot of us to sit the F down and reevaluate everything <laughs> in our life. And I think the biggest boundary I drew in 2020 and during quarantine was, especially during George Floyd, I was like, if I didn't see you outraged or posting something in solidarity, I was like, I don't want you in my life anymore. And it wasn't kind of like screw you and throw away our past. But I was like, the new me can no longer tolerate accepting people in my life who don't know how to speak up for people that can do nothing for them. And it's that same energy where it's like, treat the janitor the same way you treat the CEO. And if you only wanna speak up for people, shout out people, be around people when it's does nothing bad for you. And when I say bad, because obviously taking a stance on something like Black Lives Matter, it's gonna draw some attention to you. It's gonna isolate you maybe in front of your like white peers who are conservative or whatever. But pff, I was like, Whoa. I don't wanna say I cut off a lot of white friends, but I just stopped, you know, I stopped, uh, what do you call it? I think, I think I made it very clear where I was like, if you couldn't even do that much, like what, what more, what do we even have in common? <laughs> like, what are, what are, what are your values? If you don't even know how to speak up for people, like, what are your values? Like, clearly there's a misalignment. And I think drawing that boundary was so freeing because I didn't have to tiptoe or like, if I'm not able to talk about race and hard issues with you, I don't know if I want you in my future. Not because I think every conversation needs to be hard and political, but it's like, what good is there if you only want to be in my life when I'm winning, when it's easy? Anybody can do that. Anybody can be my friend when it's easy. But can you stand up for me and my community when it's hard, when it might isolate you, when it might be uncomfortable for, again, your white family members and friends? Like, that was so freeing for me because it almost felt like I'm carrying the weight for all of these people in my life who wouldn't carry that weight for me. And I'm standing up for all of these people and I'm their friend and I'm like speaking up for their community. I'm like, wait, you wouldn't even speak up for mine. Like, what am I, what am I doing here? And it's not this tit for tat energy, but it's just like, no, actually Glow, you don't need to hold space for everybody. Like the people that are holding space for you, those are the ones that you want to keep in your life. And so that's what I did. That was beautiful. And I don't apologize for those boundaries. And I think that also speaks to the, the, the Cherish people in your life when you have them because you don't know when you're gonna lose access to them. 
And I know there's a lot of people that can only speak about like, oh, I was friends with Glow when this happened and I knew Glow and this and I get these random messages like, oh, I, it's so cool to be friends with someone who's famous. And I was like, I don't know you. <laughs> and it's like, oh, but we, you know, that one time in high school in passing, everybody's so quick to claim some type of connection to you when you have no type of history. But it, it's amazing because they don't know all the sacrifices and all the work that you've put in to get where you are. And it's like they just want that quick and easy attachment to, to anybody who's doing something big with their life. And I was just like, that was a boundary. I was like, I don't want people like that in my life. Like it's, it's not a matter of like, you know, I just separate myself from them, but it's like, don't try to claim me when I'm doing something meaningful. Like, where were you? I haven't heard from you in 20 years. <laughs> like, what is this? It, it, it's, it was such an interesting chapter and phase last year, but it was so eye opening. And when I talked to any of my other friends that have also gone viral, all of them say the same thing. They were like, people would talk about like, oh, best friend this, best friend that. They're like, we had one conversation, one conversation. <laughs> but people exaggerate their connection to you to make themselves look better. And it's, you know, we can go the psychological route of why we do that, but that's another episode. <laughs> okay, so first type of boundary I set are physical boundaries. So physical boundaries obviously is maybe not letting someone come to your home. Maybe that's not wanting to be or share the same space with a certain person. Maybe that's you deciding to not have communication with your exes. Like a physical boundary is something that you can put in place to energetically make sure that you are staying, you know, yeah, you're, you're maintaining a sense of equilibrium with your energy. Energy is everything and people are nothing more than a ball of energy <laughs> and it could be good energy or bad energy and I've learned that I don't I don't have the time to uh, I can't afford to be around bad toxic or negative energy for too long and I realized I had a lot of complainers in my life I had a lot of people just gossipers people who just wanted to always point out things that were going wrong with people or with just situations and I was just I'm like, if we're not here to talk about a solution, let's not have this conversation. And that kind of goes into the third type of boundary, a conversational boundary, but I don't want to jump ahead. But again, physical boundary, one of my physical boundaries and, you know, just even not in sh not sharing my address and not giving anyone that type of access to just rock up to my place whenever they want. And not even, here's another thing, here was the biggest reason I was like, I don't want anyone knowing where I live because the minute they have like a layover or they're somewhere nearby, oh, Glow, can I come over? Can I stay over? I have this, I have, I'm like, no, like, I, I don't have that energy to just like, whew, it's a lot. It's people have no idea what, so sometimes people don't even know how aware or unaware of their energy they are. And I remember, remember one time where I felt someone's bad energy in my home and I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> literally felt the rooms get darker and the walls came in. Like people bring energy. And if you are someone who's not aware of the energy that you bring into every single room, check, check that, check that, because that is so important. And that is the quickest way to drive people out of your life. Because it's one thing to have a bad day, it's one thing to have a bad day and make sure everyone around you has a bad day because of you. And I'm like, oh my good, like this doesn't have to be, there's a different way to do this. Like we can talk through solutions, we can, you know, find a positive or we can just like not even talk about it. But if your goal is to make sure your bad energy becomes, it becomes cancerous and everyone else collects it, oh, I can't do that. So that's a physical boundary. Okay, second is emotional boundaries. So I always talk about capacity checks. When you're about to emotionally dump on someone or you've had a really stressful day, again, we all have them. And we all have people that we know that we can go to for certain types of, you know, dumping or conversations. But it's like, if you were having, if you were struggling with your relationship, you probably wouldn't go to your single friend. If you were struggling with your business, you probably wouldn't go to, um, I don't know, your nine to five friend. Maybe it's like you need entrepreneurship advice. You wouldn't go to a nine to five friend. You know, so having different types of friends for different types of situations that you'd want to um, talk about is important. And when it comes to emotions and who you share your emotions with, 
you need to know who you feel safe with first and feeling safe with someone is such a it takes time to get there and i think i think, talked about this in another episode but someone was like you know glow i feel like there's a wall between us and she was so right because i was like i didn't feel safe with her because if you're okay to gossip with me then i know that you're probably gossiping about me and so i was like oh. and i always make sure in, and again, I learned this from Brendan Burchard. I, I'm sorry for the amount of times that I, I quote his name on my podcast, but I always want to make sure I give credit um, where it's due. And he's helped reframe so much in my life. But he always talks about the only time I mention someone's name is if I'm championing their work. And I loved that. It totally reframed how, how and when I talk about people. And I remember I had a conversation where someone was talking negative, really negatively about someone. And that person, I hadn't met them. I didn't have, all I knew of them was from social media, like everyone else. But it was just such a harsh criticism. I like immediately was like, hey, if, if you have nothing good to say about this person, I, I don't want this conversation or I'd rather not be a part of this conversation. And it was a very clear and direct boundary and setting that right away was like, boom. Um, and I, I was like, I didn't even, I love that I didn't hesitate. It's like so ingrained in me that I, I don't want to like speak negatively about people. And shout out to Julian Brass, who's also a part of Brendan Burchard's mastermind, who, you know, also helped kind of get me into the mindset of a no gossip policy. Cause I remember we were at a mastermind um, meeting and a couple, you know, big name coaches got brought up and everyone was, you know, kind of had the same opinion or, you know, whether a speaker did a good job or not. And he kind of was like, hey, hey guys, like, you know, no gossip policy. I just I just have this thing. It's a no gossip policy. And I just rather us not, you know, talk about anyone like this. And I just respected that so much because I was like, yeah, we don't even realize sometimes how easy it is to do it. And ever since then, I was like two years ago, I've kind of been like, yeah, like if, if I'm talking about someone, it's because I'm, I'm amplifying or championing their work. And I love that frame set because it allows me to just like stop talking about people like they're doing something everyone is everyone gets talked about and everyone um everyone has an opinion so it's what's the point of wasting time talking about someone who's trying to do something uh, meaningful with their life and the third type of boundary is conversational slash intellectual boundaries so again what you are and aren't willing to talk about and that could be politics at the dinner table with your family that could be you know who you voted for like certain types of things that you know you've tried to have the conversation so many times and it never goes well you can set that boundary and say you know what this never ends in a good way so let's just never talk about this or let's just table this discussion for when we feel like we're both in a good place and that might take time so um, i've set conversational boundaries with my mom in the past um, i've set them with teammates uh it, it's just yeah, I, I think conversational boundaries also allows you to let people know what you are and aren't willing to talk about when you're around them. And I think that's important. So those are the three types of boundaries, physical, emotional, and conversational. I know there's probably a ton more. I'm curious to hear, maybe on Instagram story, you can share um, other type of boundaries that you need to set. But boundaries are always going to, um, they're always going to be needed. For everything in life and you will upset people your boundaries will upset people this episode i'm sure i have friends listening to it and it might have triggered them because they might have been like oh, did she set that boundary with me and i'm like i don't know because <laughs> i i know i've met so many people in my lifetime so you know if you've taken if you took something personal um if, if there's if there's something that doesn't apply to your situation don't take it personal but if you did take it personal um understand that it is it isn't personal boundaries are something that's about me not you when people set a boundary it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them my boundaries help me protect my peace and they keep me sane i don't want to go crazy and i don't want to lose myself trying to please other people so that that that's why i need boundaries and this is 31 year old me speaking. So I can't wait to re-listen to this episode like in 10 years because all my friends who are in their forties, like don't give up. <laughs> their boundaries are like <laughs> brick walls. Uh, we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, um, scripture, <laughs> hard pivot. <laughs> Today's scripture is from Proverbs 25, 17. 
from the ESV version. That's the English Standard Version. Um, I also like NIV and New King James Version, but for any of you who also don't like to really translate the archaic words, <laughs> I like ESV and NIV for that. So the scripture says, let your foot be seldom in your neighbor's house, lest he have his oil of you. Oil? Have his oil. I think that's wrong. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did I type that right? Lest he have his oil of you? Lest he have his... Maybe I should have just did the NIV version because there's not a lot. There's not a lot. Okay. Lest he have his... Please hold. Please hold. Sorry. <laughs> and my internet is taking its sweet time. Lest he have his oil of you and hate you. You know what, I'm just going to change this to the NIV version because I think that'll be better. Seldom set foot in your neighbor's house too much of you and they will hate you. Yeah, I should have done that from the beginning. Okay, we're going to redo that. Fill of you! <laughs> I was like, oil doesn't sound right. Lest he have his fill of you. Okay, but we're going to redo that anyway. Um, oopsie. Okay. Today's scripture is from Proverbs 25, 17. Reading from the NIV version. That's the new international version. And I usually read from NIV or ESV, English Standard Version, because I like the uh, modern translation. So the scripture says, Seldom set foot in your neighbor's house. Too much of you and they will hate you. Boundaries, boundaries. Don't be in your neighbor's business and don't let them be in yours. Otherwise, they will hate you. <laughs> this is uh, AKA, mind your business, okay? Drink your water, mind your business. <laughs> Next section, what I'm currently doing. I'm currently reading Overthinking by John Tracy. It's a very quick audible book. So it's about three and a half hours. So I'm about halfway through. Uh, shout out to one of my clients who referred me to this book. What I'm currently thinking is that my August will be a blur. I was finalizing my travel details and I was like, oh, I'm not going to be home for much of it at all. And I'm just, it's exciting. It's exciting to like be back on this schedule, but I'm also like exhausted by it. But it's all good. It's because it's going to be exciting reasons why I'm traveling. Um, what I'm currently buying, y'all, bed bug spray. Oh, bed bug spray. I stayed my final like three days. I stayed in like a tree house in Honduras. And I know that's where I got the bed bugs. I, I, I know it is because it, it's not that. And here's the thing about bed bugs. People think like, okay, bed bugs can be transferred by people and they're also in the places. And it sounds very dirty, but certain type of people can bring bed bugs into a bed. And so the bed bugs can also like, you know, just be chilling and you can clean it out. Like you can wash the sheets, change the sheets and the bed bugs will still kind of creep in the mattress and it can be very tricky. I've only had bed bugs, I think twice in my eight years of travel. So it's crazy that like, yeah, they came back and it, a part of me was like, oh, I feel so gross. And I've had to like, gosh, I've washed my entire, like I'm cleaning out the whole bedroom, but I've washed all my sheets twice. Um, my carpet, my mattress I have to deep clean, and then I'm getting this spray that like, yeah, that I'm just like setting up around my, my room because um, the thing about bed bugs is, you know, I, I don't think I'm being, you know, precautious, but, or I'm being cautious, but I, I don't think they're, I brought them with me because, yeah, I'm, 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 I know I got them in the tree house because it's just, it felt, I mean, it was so cute, but it, it kind of was like, it was a very outdoor situation. Like it just, <laughs> it looked like a kind of place where you would get bed bugs, <laughs> I'll just be honest. And I mean, I stayed for the first week of my time. I stayed at a beautiful like boutique hotel property. And then the last couple days I was like, I wanna do something like more off the, off the beaten path. And yeah, very, very off. <laughs> I mean that. 
but it's not gonna kill me. Just a couple, uh, it, it almost looks like chicken pox. Not chicken pox, that's random. Okay, I don't want y'all to freak out. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, there's only a couple. It's not too bad, but I'll be good, I'll be good. Um, what I'm currently learning is that motivation is cheap, but it's still worth buying. So it's so important that you don't rely on motivation alone to, to, to allow you to make progress with any of your goals. Like, even though it's cheap, it's still something worth investing in, whether that's a podcast, a video, motivational books. Like motivation, they recommend it daily, like showers, you know, the, like the quote says. But a lot of people just, you know, oh, I'm not motivated, I'll never be motivated. And so they never even go for the motivated path. Motivation is cheap, but it's still worth buying. What I'm currently manifesting is a finished book proposal this week. Um, we're, I say we, I, I'm on schedule, I believe, um, getting it submitted uh, before Q4 is the goal. So doing well, I wanna get it done this week though. What I'm currently praying for is discipline and leadership skills, just always fine tuning what I can be doing better as a leader and just within my own day-to-day -day life. What I'm currently watching, I just finished the Naomi Osaka documentary on Netflix so good i cried three times watching it i wonder i wonder if y'all can guess what parts made me cry <laughs> i'm i'm a wuss i'm an empath but i'm also a wuss and yeah that that documentary broke me i also saw different parts of myself in her story and i'm like man people have no idea of the pressure what i'm currently avoiding taking out the trash even though it's like a few steps down the hall it always feels like a, a chore to leave my apartment opening the door i'm like <gasps> uh what i'm currently loving is my acceptance of my circumstances can you have it all do you want to have it all who knows but i love the all that i currently have so until you know how to set boundaries you will either be too much or not enough for everyone I hope y'all enjoyed that. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tag me on Instagram and post your favorite quote so I can share it at Glow Graphics, G-L-O Graphics. Please leave a review wherever you're listening. Shout out to my people on YouTube who are watching me. If you want to follow the visual video version, check out my YouTube, Glow Atanmo. Love you guys so much. Thank you and chat with you on the next episode.